heading to Liberia to put uniforms on kids. We were talking about Trap Lord and how it originated. Can you just tell us just the background on how Trap Lord was collaborating with Uniform and how the whole process began? Well, the process began by my manager introducing me to Chit Liberty, who started the, the brand Uniform. And Uniform was designed to basically sell clothing and each garment that's sold is a uniform on a kid's back. I didn't want to get involved with the project if I didn't know what it was yeah. about. So I was like, I got to go to Africa. Before mm -hmm. I even get started on anything, I want to go touch the people, see how this operation works. And it really what it was is really what Chid said it is. And he took me to the factory. Shout out to the all, all the women in West Point who work at the factory. Um, they was working on uniforms. And what was so dope about it, you'll see them working on those uniforms in the factory, but then see the kids right outside. Rocking. Walking to school in yeah. those same uniforms. So that was the proof in the pudding for me right there. And also what's so even bigger than just putting uniforms on, on these kids' back. The cherry on top is that we're actually employing people. So it's like it's providing mm -hmm. more jobs because the more uniforms that we put on these kids' backs, the more jobs these people get. The more clothes we sell, the more uniforms, uniforms they're going to be able to make. Mm. Yeah, so. so it just goes all around. It's giving jobs, yeah. So yeah. it's like actually like we literally feed in a village. Uniform is more, I want to say from what I've seen, is a more minimal and sleek approach. How does your flamboyant swag play into this? Are you going to change the game a little bit in regards to creative direction for Uniform? It's more subtle, but the okay. cuts, the cuts is, is what it's about. It's more cut and sew pieces. It's about the fabrics. It's not so much logo driven because me personally, I don't like a lot of logos and I know I would want this, I would want uh, a person that's 30 years old to a person that's about in their teens to be able to wear this. If you're a man going to work doing a nine to five, we got a button up for you. We got some khakis. But if you like a, a, a kid that's in the, in the streets just hanging out, we got some, some camo um, pants for you. We got hats, we got vests. If you need to do an interview or something like that, and then we got like, something you can wear with your Tims and your sneakers, you just hanging out. I look at it like we're dressing people to get ready for the world. Whatever occasion you pulling up to, you gotta, you gotta be prepared. The culture that we live within today, we're very greedy and we want things instantly, yeah. especially fashion. Right. Uh, now you see us transitioning into quote unquote fast fashion. Yeah. And you know, you have the fashion calendar where you have your spring, summer, going to your fall, winter, but now fast fashion, it's just like collection after collection after yeah. collection. And the people that are producing these clothes are making the clothes, getting paid pennies just so that we could be rocking the freshest and the illest gear. Right. And it's doing a complete injustice to the human beings that are making these clothes with their bare hands and it's like, we just don't give a shit. How does that feel for you to be knowing, to be in such an intimate space with these people in in Liberia and seeing these women and knowing that they are making clothing and then you see the children walking by with the gear, like, yeah. how does that all feel? I mean, it feels really good. I couldn't even take it all in. Yeah. Uh, being there, <laughs> actually, actually being in the factory with the, the females that you know create all the uh, clothing, and for me, it's bigger than fashion. They're not even creating fashion; they're creating apparel so people can go to school. They're very happy with their jobs, and they're just they're just excited to keep working and, and be able to feed their families. And um, I'm good just knowing that you know, if I can help out with my platform, then it puts a smile on my heart. So we know that you birth Trap Lord. What exactly is Trap Lord? So Trap Lord basically derived from ASAP Yams calling me Trap Lord because I was the Lord of every trap. Meaning, you know, the trap, the word trap comes from 
your hustle, what your grind is, what, what you hustling at the time. So, you know, at that time I was designing, I was painting, and um, I was doing these belts at the, around the time and I got them like on Swiss and I had Chris Brown buying them and I had Diggy and all these different artists, Ludacris, J. Cole, had like my belts. So he was just like, man, now you rapping, you the trap lord, you, you the lord of every trap you, you get into. So I, the name stuck to me. And um, you know, I remember going on Drake tour and I was really on that Roman noodle diet. Like we, we couldn't afford nothing. Like, you know, we was just a support. And um, I was on tour and I saved all my per diems, you know, the little bit I was getting every day. And um, instead of eating ramen noodles, you know, I was just like, man, I'm tired of eating this. I'm tired of eating peanut butter and jellies in these green rooms. I'm gonna save my bread and I'm gonna start up my line, which is Trap Lord. I took $35 in per diem money and I sent it over uh, to my family. And um, I had like silk screen machines and stuff like that my father left behind. He passed away. Uh, and um, I got him, I got some t-shirts made with $35. Now we a million dollar company. With your pops passing away, it's crazy that he had silk screen shops. And if I'm not mistaken, he also designed the logo for Bad Boy. Yeah, he did the Bad Boy logo for uh, Puff, and he did the Uptown Cast logo for Andre Harrell. And he was like one of the first black guys, you know, if not the only black guy doing t-shirts uh, in a time where it was only like Jewish people that owned like the major silk screening companies. You know, um, you could call them in the middle of the night and get about a thousand shirts printed front to back. Uh, multicolored, you know what I'm saying? Delivered straight to the private jet. You know what I'm saying I, I've been on, I've been in rides. I've been on late, like late night shift rides with him to like, you know, a private jet making a band T-shirts for Puff and uh, doing Loon shirts and um, you know D Block, you know, shooting screens with him for that. So um, you know, even before that, before I was even involved in the business, he was. That's what he was doing. When all of this stuff was going down, like, did you ever feel that this was foreshadowing your life right now in this present moment? And did you feel that eventually everything would come full circle, that you would be kicking it with P. Diddy, or that you would be so engulfed in fashion, but like in a really high-end perspective on just such a greater platform? I always had a dream of it. Like when I was a kid, you know, I used to sit home and watch fashion shows. And um, I used to watch all the fashion shows. I just watched the fashion channel all day. And then I just, I knew I knew I was different. Like when one of my boys, like he, he stayed over at my crib and I was just like, yo, check this fashion show out. And he wasn't into it as much as I was. <laughs> and I was like, I'm kind of obsessed with this thing. It, it kind of wasn't realistic to me in my head, or I felt like kind of took him back from it because it was so hard getting into it and breaking down barriers. And um, I didn't, I didn't really have the huge platform um, that I needed to for my thing to even be looked at from a certain perspective. I felt like I, I needed a, a bigger platform, and that's what I feel like rapping did for me. Is it gave me the platform. And now I'm able to, you know, get in the Vogue's, get in the GQ's, get in the complexes, get in the, all these different, um, different doors uh, to share my story with, with the world. It is unfortunate uh, that, especially black people, that we have these stereotypes pinned to us. It's either music or sports. Right. Um, black people are mad talented, and we know that. And we've been killing right. the game, and not even just uh, music and sports, but fashion as well. We got to think about the Harlem Renaissance, like, you know, when we changed the game, the whole community just kind of picked up music, picked up uh, art, picked up, uh, you know, jazz. All the jazz musicians came by to play in, you know, uh, different venues. And um, we came a long way as far as that. And I feel like for us, we always going to be a striving people. And um, that's just the way it is. I think those before me to break down those barriers, um, you know, Pharrell, the Kanye's, who kind of made it possible for us to 
really be seen in that light. And even before Pharrell and Kanye, you, you gotta think about like the Slick Rick, who was like wearing like all the fly, like, you know, high name brands. And then um, even Dapper Dan, who even put like, you know, our community um, on like two, like these high fashion name brands and kind of innovated himself. So um, I thank all the forefathers and the foremothers for, uh, you know, paving the way for me to do what I do now. So I don't feel the uh, marginalization of it right now as they might have felt it before because they broke down those barriers for me to kind of like walk freely. They popped it all off. these grounds, exactly. So it's just like me and Rocky, you know, literally niggas in Paris at the Dior dinner with Chris Van Nash and the owner of Dior, Sydney. Um, pretty much like the only black guys at the table. Yeah. Rocky is pretty much like, I think like the first black model for Dior, if I'm not mistaken. You know, we're able to do that because of the forefathers, you know. We had good times, so I never really look at it as a color thing. I'm very aware of what we had to do as a people to get to this point. But um, yeah, I, I, I kind of just, I'm looking at it uh, thinking like, yeah, we came a long way, but we got even like longer ways to go. Oh,